Hello and welcome to another Ori Clark Audio Quick Guide, a straightforward conversation about a range of topics and issues commonly handled by Ori Clark experts for their clients. My name's Dominic Frisby, and joining me on this episode is Chartered Accountant, Chartered Tax Advisor, and partner at Ori Clark, Andy Ori, and with him is Chartered Accountant, Mike Darby. And today's hot topic is online cloud accounting. It gets no sexier than that. So Mike, why don't we start off, what is online cloud accounting? So cloud computing has been around for a while now. Very basically, if you have cloud accounting software, your accounting data is held on a cloud server, typically run by Amazon Web Services. And this data is accessed and edited for an internet browser, such as Google Chrome. We have seen adoption of such platforms surge as the cloud accounting platforms have grown in variety and application. This software is generally sold under a subscription model, commonly referred to as software as a service. Some typical examples in the marketplace would be Zero or QuickBooks. I've got you. And why do I care? So cloud computing is the present and future of accounting, and its adoption will only increase. As adoption increases more and more consumers and customers will start to request better and more integrated data connections. We're already noticing the trend for online consumers to demand the very best technological service from online shopping platforms. You cannot service such data demands without cloud computing. As an example of this, HMRC's Making Tax Digital MTD program Basically, through the program, HMRC will need you to submit accounting data through to their cloud with the submission of certain tax filings. Whilst you can prepare your data outside of the cloud and then submit it to HMRC's cloud store, it just makes more sense to prepare all the data in the cloud ready for submission. You also have the data ready in the cloud when those suppliers and customers start to request better data and data connection. Can they look at the data before you actually submitted it? Well, it depends exactly what we're talking about, but they they have a right to access your data, uh, your bank statements, for instance, without your permission if they wish. I think the base point is that you put stuff in the cloud so you can access it from anywhere at any time on your mobile phone, at your computer, at your desk. Why have it fixed to a location? It's a huge advantage to put stuff in the cloud. It means that A small mobile phone with a browser can have the computing power of an enterprise system anywhere in the world. What it then is leading to is information is becoming real-time, is being entered as you go, not historically. And then the third thing that you're talking about is that as you get into that position, that anyone can plug into it, anyone can see this data, anyone can access this data, and this data is real-time, the revenue you want to tax it the revenue want to access it. So making tax digital, or as I prefer its name, making tax difficult, is and the, and the HMRC are far ahead of almost everyone internationally on this, is all about HMRC plugging their computer system into your computer system directly. And that's what they want to do. They want to reduce their staff levels. They want to reduce processing levels. And arguably, it increases accuracy. It increases all these things. But there's no doubt about it that the cloud makes enormous sense for an enormous amount of things, especially accounting. So that is inevitable. And it enables you to plug things together. But unfortunately, one of the things that will be plugged together is Mr. Taxman. It just means that the taxman can start doing what he's released on tax day and stuff and start saying, I'm going to tax you as you go. You know, I'll have the money now. I think we might be going to that because in the same way that income tax has been a really easy tax to collect since we've had PAYE and you deduct the money at source and then (laughs) leave it to the person to try and claim it back afterwards. And you have the company deduct the money on behalf of the tax man. And so if the company does it wrong, the company gets in trouble. But it, you know, it's long been proven that deducting money at source results in greater revenue for HMRC. And so I, I, we're probably slowly going towards PAYE for freelancers, PAYE for companies. But look, it's upsides and downsides, isn't it? And the upside of cloud computing and cloud accounting is that I can upload my data. I can take. I can be in a restaurant. I can be in any situation. I can take a picture. I can access reports. I can see what's going on with my business. I mean, the amusing thing is, is, is Mike will no doubt comment on is that someone says, "Oh, look at this wonderful dashboard on my phone," and they go, "Oh, that's wonderful. I need that." You know, what do you need to know? You know, and when do you need to know it? Is 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 a more subtle question. 
that's a great thing about all these new applications coming on board. I mean, previously, yep, you've got this dashboard on your phone. You don't know whether it's up to date. You don't know what the data in it sort of contains. You don't know what it's telling you. But yeah. as the market is progressing and the cloud becomes more and more widespread, more software companies are really starting to build those kind of applications. So those dashboards are starting gradually, gradually to become more and more usable. Yes. So you can then just on the go, hopefully in a few years' time, then look at that dashboard and be able to make some business sense out yeah, of it. Yeah, so you've got players like Xero, the big ones from New Zealand, uh, QuickBooks, who are the big ones from America, but everyone's doing it. And these are ecosystems. These are like Salesforce platform, you know, these, these huge platforms and they're designed to allow other software companies to plug into it. So Zero, the basic Zero is quite a basic accounting package. It does a p and it does a balance sheet. It doesn't do stock very well. You know, it doesn't do a lot of stuff at all, but there's so many people out there. And I think, you know, what you're saying, Mike, is the software has been coming along and coming along and these apps that can plug in, some of them are becoming really powerful and really useful now. So I'm starting to understand what, what does a business need? You know, what does Dominic need to know? What do I need to know? Exactly that, exactly that. I'd compare some of the older accountancy software to your old Nokias. You'd be able to make a phone call, send a text, maybe play a quick game of Snake if you had a bit of time. But your new accounting platforms are very much like your Apples and your Androids. You've got a whole huge store of apps on Xero and QuickBooks, which you can just use to find a new piece of software which will connect to your Xero and QuickBooks and just help out your business with a certain task. And the problem is there's too many. There's so many. And it's like everything now. It's like there's so much coming out and so much going on that you're as a business, you're just overwhelmed with like all of this stuff coming on the market. And do I use this or that or this or that? So, you know, it's it's coming down to accountants again to sort of sift through it and, and use it with multiple clients. And we're lucky enough to have some very well-known players, you know, and we're lucky enough often to deal with Australian and New Zealand's a lot. Who, and Australia and New Zealand have been at the forefront of this revolution because of their sort of more, more modern dynamic setup that they've come from. You know, they've got rid of cash, you know, and checks pretty much. So we're lucky to have that experience and we can learn from others and we can learn from our own experience because like anything, there's a thousand programs but there's only three that are really good and reliable and we we can we could recommend. Okay, so how di- the next question is how we sort of covered this a bit, but I'll ask it anyway. How difficult is it to do? Yeah, I mean, cloud software is designed to be easier and they're definitely easier to implement than historic software. Um, they're intended to be plug and play systems and they attempt to make accounting easy for non accountants. However, these are cookie cutter systems. And each system will have its slight nuances. I think it's following that flow of data, isn't it? Okay, so it might be easy to plug this system in. So let's say you're a business which sells things online and you've got an online marketplace and you've got PayPal it's generating stuff and you want to plug that into your accounting system. Well, you, you plug it in. Now, is the VAT going to the right place? Is your VAT return correct? Is the sales going to the right place? Is the cost going to the right place? You know... Plugging these two things together enables automated flow of data between these things. So what happens is if you get it wrong and you set it up wrong, you get piles of data now in your other system, which you probably can't even get rid of because of the nature of audit trails. You know, you can't just delete stuff. You can with some systems, but you shouldn't be able to. The revenue want to track it. Your auditors want to track it. They want to know what's in there. It's very important. So, you know, you've you've got to plug it together gently and test it and technically understand bookkeeping, technically understand double entry, you know, the ability to understand what goes on a balance sheet, what goes on a profit and loss, what should go to the VAT man. I mean, I've seen all sorts of cock-ups over the years, you know, and yeah, you've just you've just got to plug it together gently and make sure what's known as your chart of accounts is being respected and things are going to the right place. And then you've got to review it and test it as you go. But once you get it right, You're off to the races. You're down by the swimming pool doing bugger all. I mean, one of the main things you're paying for with access to these companies is the fact that they are going to protect and maintain your data and back it up. So previously, where you would have potentially spent hours on the last Friday of the month when you really wanted to go home, 
downloading all your accounting data onto a CD, flash drive, etc., and just putting it into storage. Don't have to do that anymore. It's all protected on the clouds with security as good, if not better than and the And you bank. can share it with your bookkeeper in New Zealand, with your accountant in England, with your, your sales manager in America. You know, the, the, the power of the cloud is endless. How long does it take? I would say the most time-consuming aspect is migrating the data and tailoring the system. I mean, there, there are programs that can help reformat that data and speed up the process, tend to be cookie-cutter programs. You could rush it in weeks, but... You know, in reality, if you if you're currently doing everything in Excel and you, you know, and you're going to have to because the tax man's going to make you use a cloud accounting system to pump your data into the revenue, so you're being pushed in this direction whether you like it or not. You know, in a, it, within a month or two, it's not constant work. You know, you do a little bit one week, a little bit the next, and you move everything over. And you probably want to do it at a year end is the other thing. You probably want to do it at a point in time, either a quarter end of your VAT or a year end, where you can sort of draw a line in the data. Okay, next question. How will it help my business? So we touched upon collaboration and real-time information. I mean, yes, you can now submit your tax filings from the Beach Bahamas, which was saw was everyone's dream in the past. And you can also work together with everyone across the world. And once you've got that data input and been looked at regularly, that information will start to become real-time. We've touched upon also the fact that the accounting data is protected, backed up and maintained by the providers of the platform, which just makes it a lot easier, uh, which saves you the chore of backing up your data and maintaining it. Being on the cloud, we've also touched upon the fact that it does easily connect to other applications as well. I mean, what that allows you to do is previously companies would have been pushed onto a jack-of-all-trades system because integrations were long, costly affairs which were likely to break or make the system insecure when the software were was updated across either system. But now, using the cloud, you can really sew apps together and develop a set of kings instead of jacks. I think what you said to me, which I thought was very true, previously, this level of analysis and reporting and you know automation was only available to the very largest companies using an extremely unfriendly system called SAP, which if you've ever had the mispleasure to be involved in installing, you probably, it's, it ranks up there with you as your divorce is one of the most difficult things to get through in life. But now, plug and play, easy access, Kiwis got involved and made it all very friendly and simple. It gives a small business, a business of one or five or 10 or 100 people, the ability to basically do whatever they want, you know. And I, I would summarize or finish it on the sort of, you know, knowledge is power, you know, cash is king, the future is now. And to be able to get an up to date view of your business across multiple companies and geographies with projected cash flow three to six months at the touch of a button on a mobile phone on a beach is, is pretty cool. What are the things to watch out for? So as we touched on those API limits and integrations, because um, if you spent a lot of money in the new system and you find out it doesn't work, then <laughs> you just waste a load of money. You, you also need to watch out for fe features which fall short of other providers on the market. This is a booming market right now. And the providers are adding new features. They're adding one every month, most providers. And these new features, they're not, released as older software providers would have released them, being tested, carefully bug tested, carefully released to market after a lot of testing. They're released to market almost untested in beta versions, and they let the customers do a lot of the work for the yeah, testing. Yeah. I, I tell you what, what you should watch out for, payroll. Payroll, you cannot get wrong. And what's happened is by, by making these things easier, VAT is another one, but payroll's the most difficult. Payroll is very complicated in the UK. What's happening is they've said, hey, it's all easy. It's all in our system. We'll give you payroll for five pound a month. So the problem is they're giving you all the power but you got you fundamentally you have to understand how payrolls work. It's like everything, isn't it? You know, I I, I can I can tick buttons and I can follow a wizard, but if I don't fundamentally understand the subject, I'm going to guess. 
If you're dealing with payroll, that could be a seriously painful event. So I think be aware that just because the company's selling you something is nice and easy and they see it all, everyone else is doing it. That's the other thing I always hear. It's like, well, everyone else is doing their payroll and zero. It's like, yeah, and they're all getting it wrong, you know? So just, just be mindful of that and make sure you get it reviewed by someone who knows what they're talking about. These are powerful pieces of software. Tax is very complicated. Make sure you get competence or review on it. On that note, Andrew Horry, Mike Darby, thank you very much. And thank you very much to you, dear listener. If you want to find out more about anything we've, we've just been talking about, you can find out more information in the resource library section at auryclark.com. And if you can't find what you need, then send us an email, contact at auryclark.com, and one of our experts will get back to you and tell you everything you need to know. Until next time, cheerio. Cheerio.